main findings are that early childhood programs work. And that shows up loud and clear in our research. I should note that the research I'm talking about is research with two colleagues at Duke, Clara Mushkin and Ken Dodge. Well, we were looking at the effects of both Smart Start and more at four, which is now called um, North Carolina Pre-K. But, and we were looking at them from the beginning of those programs, one starting in the early 90s and one starting in the early 2000s, um, looking at the effects on third grade outcomes. Okay. So programs are early childhood programs, but we're looking at the effects on um, outcomes for the same children who were had access to those programs much later when they're in third grade. And eventually, um, we'd like to look at effects um, in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, but we haven't done that yet. The main ones we've focused on in our work to date are third grade test scores, math test scores and reading test scores. And we find that each of the initiatives, Smart Start and More at Four, each separately, and then you can add them up, um, raise um, the test scores in both math and reading, with slightly bigger relative effects in math for more at four um, than for Smart Start, which makes some sense to me, because more at four is a preschool program as opposed to just an early childhood program. Our methodology differs from the methodology used in most studies of early uh, childhood programs. In contrast to those studies that focus primarily on the participants, the individual participants in the program, we focus on the um, effects on all children who had access to the programs because there was funding provided to the county in which the child uh, lived when the child was the appropriate age. Um, so we're looking at longitudinal data and taking advantage of the fact that the programs, each of them, were introduced in different counties. They were phased in, so they were introduced in different counties at different points in time. So it's, there are a couple of main benefits, we think. Um, if, in, when you focus on the participants in a program, there's always the worry, and, and compare the effects on participants to those children who did not participate in the program, there's always the worry that there's something special about the participants that you haven't captured in the analysis. Now, if you have a um, full random assignment, you can um, deal with that issue. And that was the case with the Abbasidarian study in the um, Harry High, high School um, Preschool Program. But most times, you don't have that um, random assignment. So you always have to worry that there's some bias because the participants just by the mere fact of choosing to participate or having their parents choose to have them participate in the program are different in some way from the control group. So we avoid that. The other thing um, that we have in our study is the fact that we're looking both at the effects on the participants themselves and also on everybody else who might benefit. So we call those spillover effects. And we haven't sorted out yet in our analysis exactly what's spillover and what's direct because we can't, we don't have the ability to do that. But we think these spillover effects are potentially um, very important. So, for example, if, if a county does a very good job preparing its young children for school, then that's going to make the job of the teachers easier um, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade third grade, um, so there could be positive spillovers in the, for the other children in those classes. Or if, um, as is the case with the more for preschool program, coming along with that, and also with the Smart Start program, are requirements for the quality of the program. So as part of the program, the quality of all preschools or 
daycare centers may increase, and that may help not only the children who are, in the case of more four, funded directly or with more four funds, or supported by more four funds, but other children who benefit from the higher quality um, programs. Now, there could be some negative spillovers as well, so we're getting the net spillover effect. There's always the problem that with any study using this type of methodology, that um, what we think are the effects of the program could still be, could be attributed to some other thing that's going on. So if at the same time, or maybe eight years after the uh, uh, county um, participates in, or begins to participate in, say, Smart Start, they get so excited about education that they invest much more in education than some other county. Um, so, so it's hard to rule out all these other things that are uh, going on. So in the study itself, we spend about half of our time or space in the paper trying to rule out other explanations. And our basic model is designed to do that as well. Um, by trying to control for differences across counties that might account for differences in third grade test scores. And we um, try to control statistically for things that are happening year by year, statewide, to try to rule out some of these alternative explanations. But could there still be some alternative explanation for the findings? Um, there could be. Um, but we're pretty confident that they're clearly, that these positive effects emerge and what we can't rule out completely is that they may be something that's correlated with the introduction or growth of Smart Star. They're pretty clear to us. The General Assembly should not cut funding for these programs. We understand that North Carolina and other states are under real pressure to um, and to cut programs, but it just seems like investments of this type are particularly important, especially at a time when um, many, an increasing number of children are. Um, growing up in poverty or um, facing um, poverty because of the state's high unemployment rate, just seems like we have a responsibility um, to do right by our kids. And our study suggests that um, these programs are good investments.